Okay, let's talk about how to evaluate a function. So if you are in any sort of algebra course, you're going to have to do a lot of work with functions. Functions are tremendously important in mathematics. So this is a big topic, but uh, we're going to be uh, very specific about what we're going to be learning in this video, and that is how to evaluate a function. So you can see here I have a function, and I want to evaluate this particular function. This is a very common uh, test question, quiz question, homework question. So uh, if you were wondering, how do you evaluate uh, functions? Well, I'm going to uh, go through this. It's not that difficult, but again, this is only one uh, little slice of all the things you need to learn about functions and algebra. So I'm going to get to all of this in just one second, but first let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I'm going to leave a link to my math help program in the description of this video, but I've been teaching math for decades, and over those years I've learned one thing, okay, and that one thing is all students can be successful in mathematics, but uh, there's kind of a two-part formula there. One, uh, students need to be willing to do the work, okay? So if you're willing to do the work, that's, you know, half of um, the equation for success in math. But the other half is you need clear and understandable instruction, okay? You need someone to teach you, you know, in a way that you like and understand. And I think that's where I can help you out. So if you're at the middle school, high school, or even college level and struggling in mathematics, definitely check out my math help program. It will help you out. Now, if you happen to be uh, preparing for any sort of test that has a math section on it, I'm talking about things like the GED, SAT, ACT, uh, GRE, GMAT. I could go on and on and on. There's a ton of tests out there that uh, people have to take. You might be thinking to yourself, I don't need to take any of these uh, particular exams. Well, if, you are, if you're going to college or technical school or anything like that, or going to become a teacher, like a teacher certification exam, you will have to uh, prepare and uh, try to pass these uh, exams. So I can help you out there. If you homeschool, my middle and high school uh, homeschool courses were just voted number one by a major homeschool publisher. Very excited about that. And if you need some math notes, I'm going to leave uh, links to uh, my math notes in the description of this video. All right, so let's get to it. How to evaluate a function. Now, if you... Um, know how to do this, if you understand how to evaluate a function, go ahead and find f of 3 for this uh, function there. So the directions, maybe like on a homework problem, would be evaluate uh, this function for f of 3. So let's get into it and start talking about what it means to evaluate a function. All right, so anytime you see uh, this word evaluate, and it could be... Uh, with um, things that are not even or a function. It could be like an algebraic or a variable expression. But when you see the word evaluate, what it means is you're going to plug in a, a numeric value. You're going to replace a variable. You're going you're to plug in a um, numeric value for that variable, and then you're going to simplify. Okay, that's basically what this word means. So let's go ahead and uh, evaluate f of x equals 2x squared minus 5 for f of 3. Okay, now another way you could write this um, or describe this problem is to um, uh, find f of 3 for this function, but this word here is very, very common in mathematics. Okay, so um, we're going to go ahead and find f of 3. Again, we're going to evaluate this function for 3, so we're going to replace the variable, okay, with the value. In this case, it's 3, okay? So anytime you see a function and you're trying to evaluate a function, this little number there, okay, this number in, in, uh, in the parentheses right there means replace whatever variables you have in that function with this number, okay? So here I see the x, I'm going to replace it with 3, and uh, when you replace, when you plug in a value for a variable, I need you to always, always, always use parentheses, okay? So notice here, I'm putting parentheses, I'm plugging in that uh, number, uh, and it's surrounded by parentheses. That's a whole other conversation, but it just I'm just telling you right now, it will save you from making little errors, all right? So just uh, believe me on that one. But uh, let's go ahead and now simplify the remainder of this problem. Now, when you simplify a function after you plug in a variable, you're going to have to keep in mind uh, the order of operations. So remember all that good stuff like PEMDAS, Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, but if we do parentheses first, exponents or powers, multiplication, division, whatever we see from left to right, and addition, subtraction, whatever we see from left to right. So uh, a lot of students uh, will make mistakes. So for example, right here, 
this is two times three squared minus five. So the first thing we do um, is powers or exponents. That's three squared. But I could tell you right now, thousands and thousands of students doing, if they're watching this video, uh, if I didn't have this written out, they would go two times three. I've seen that mistake so many times. So that would be like six squared minus five, which is wrong. You're doing multiplication before powers. So when you're evaluating, you need to be highly focused on the order of operations. So let's go ahead and uh, do this right. So three squared, we're gonna do powers first before multiplication. So three squared, of course, is nine. And then we have two times nine is 18. That's multiplication. We have our five over here. So 18 minus five is 13. So um, f of three is equal to 13, or we evaluated this function for three, and the answer is 13, okay? All right, so if you understand that, well, then, then you understand how to evaluate a function. But let's go ahead and do a few little practice problems here. Now, if you want to pause the video and kind of play along, I think that's uh, uh, the best way to um, get the most value out of this little exercise. But here we have f of x is equal to 4x minus 1. Let's go ahead and evaluate this function for 1 half, or we want to find f of 1 half, okay? All right, so I'm going to go ahead and do that now. So f of 1 half, again, I'm going to replace this variable, the x, with the, um, the number, which is 1 half. So that's going to be 4, remember I'm plugging in with parentheses, times 1 half minus 1, okay? Now I'm going to go ahead and simplify. So I'm going to do multiplication uh, first. So 4 times 1 half is, of course, 2, okay? So 2 minus 1 is, of course, going to be 1. So f of 1 half is equal to 1. All right, so again, what, what do we do here? We evaluated this function for the value of one half, okay? Or we found f of one half, okay? All right, so if you got that right, excellent. All right, so let's move on. Now notice here, um, I'm talking about functions. It's very, very typical to see uh, most functions written as f of x, but I wanna show you that it doesn't always have to be f of x. You can have all sorts of functions. Now, uh, the name of the function is this outside variable, okay? So this, a uh, function is g, okay, but we use t, or sorry, we use x to write the function rule, okay? The name of this function is the f function, okay? That's the name right there. So I can even write a function like this, uh, like let's say fun of x, okay, is equal to x plus one, all right? Again, this little variable, right, this is just the name. Now you can write it like this, matter of fact, um, in like computer science and other things, you'll see the actual name of the function. So don't get uh, too um, tied up on this letter. It's just the name of the function. But let's go ahead and move on to number two. So here we have g of x, the g function, or a g function, that's the name, uh, is equal to x plus one over five. That's the rule, okay? This is the actual function. And now we want to find g of negative 16, or we want to evaluate uh, this g function for uh, negative 16. So let's go ahead and do that now. Of course, if you want to do this, pause the video and uh, do uh, the work. But I'm going to do this now. So g of negative 16, I'm plugging in using parentheses negative 16 for x right there, right? Plus 1 over 5. All right, so I'm pretty confident that I uh, replaced this x with the appropriate value. Now I'm going to use the order of operations and my knowledge of positive negative numbers, all my math skills that I've learned up to this point I'm going to be using to simplify this. So negative 16 plus 1 is what? Negative 15 over 5. A negative divided by a positive is going to be a negative. So this is going to be 15 divided by 5, which is, of course, 3, or negative 3. So g of negative 16 is equal to negative 3. Uh, again, what did we do here? We evaluated the g function for negative 16, and this is the answer. All right, again, I'm kind of um, only focused on how to evaluate, but we're talking, there's so many things you need to know about functions beyond this. Uh, and I have a ton of additional videos on my YouTube channel about functions, or maybe you want to just sign up for one of my courses, like what, any one of my algebra courses, pre-algebra. Well, pre-algebra is kind of more basic, but if you're like an algebra one, algebra two, college algebra, even pre-calculus, I teach all functions very thoroughly in all those courses. 
Okay, so let's finish up with this last problem. Let me scoot this down here. And now let's talk about the name of this function. Well, this is H function, and we're not using X's, we're using T. This is the H of T, okay? That's how we would say that. So notice this, whatever this letter is, this T, this is what it's gonna be in the rule. Let's go back to the G function so we understand this here. So notice I have an X there, so we use the X when we write out the function rule. Here, if I have H of T, you're not gonna write this as the square root of X squared minus x okay if you use the x variable you have to use the x in the function like so okay so just make sure you understand that because um if you're watching this video chances are you're just still learning about functions okay so let's go ahead and evaluate this h function for negative one we want to find h of negative one let's go ahead and do that now so that's going to look like this okay so we're gonna to have to be very careful here. Remember I said use parentheses. So we're gonna replace the T with negative one. So that's gonna be negative one squared. That's T squared minus uh, parentheses negative one for that T. Okay, so let's just make sure we're super clear about this. T squared, um, when T is negative one is going to look like that. Again, parentheses, okay? And then this T, that's a negative one right there. So. A good idea before you could uh, start to simplify is to make sure you actually plugged in uh, uh, the numeric values correctly into the function. And then once you're confident about that, then we could start simplifying using the order of operations. So let's go ahead and do that now. All right, so negative one squared, what is that? That is a positive one. Now we have to ask ourselves, what is a negative of a negative or the opposite of a negative or the negative times a negative? Any uh, way you wanna look at that, that's going to be a positive one, okay? So again, uh, if you don't use these parentheses, a lot of students um, uh, get in trouble, especially with negative signs. So let me go ahead and uh, not make my square root symbol so long. So here we have the square root of one plus one, which of course is just the square root of two. So our final answer is h of negative one is equal to the square root of two. So we evaluated the h of um, t function for negative one and the answer is the uh, square root of two. Okay, so how did you do? Do you understand all this? Well, if you understand all this, I'm going to give you a nice happy face. Boy, that, let me make the eyes a little bit more symmetric. Uh, so then that's very, very good, okay? I'm gonna give you an A plus. 100%, I'm gonna give you a few stars because everyone loves stars. I remember back in the first and second grade, a teacher would dish out these stars. I was so happy about that. Matter of fact, um, I think we used to have a whole bunch of stars. I don't even know if they do that anymore. I hope they do because, you know, who doesn't like stars? I'll tell you what, you know, if I had to go back and uh, give my top students stuff, I would probably put nice little stars on their homework and their test and quiz grades, but guess what? When you're grading thousands and thousands of papers, you don't really have that time. But listen, uh, if you understand this stuff, that's very good. Okay, that's the whole point of this video. But here's the deal. Uh, you watching me is not the same as you uh, mastering the skill or building the skill up. You have to do practice prompts in order to uh, build up your own math skills. Okay, So don't confuse watching a video and be like, oh, I understand that versus you, you know, uh, being able to actually do this in a particular prompt. You'll be surprised of how many things you watch. You're like, I get that. And then like five, 10 minutes later, you forget that because you don't practice. You got to practice. But anyways, if this little video did help you out uh, and get you going in the right direction, please consider helping me out by smashing that like button and maybe even uh, subscribing to my YouTube channel. I've been on uh, uh, YouTube for 10 plus years. I have over a thousand plus math videos from basic math to advanced math like calculus and everything in between. So if you like my teaching style, please take advantage of all my content. But my best math help will always be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your uh, time and have a great day.